Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Drew, and today we'll be taking a look at the Chase Labs Configuration Manager. And to get started, uh, I will show you where you can get the Chase Labs Configuration Manager, and that is from uh, this website, nougat.org, and just look up either CL Configuration or Chase Labs Configuration Manager. And to get started, we will open up Visual Studio and we'll create just a simple console application. And we'll call this console app test config manager. Simple enough. And I'll just place this in my directory for console applications. And we're not gonna need a solution, so we're just going to check place solution in project in the same directory because we will only have one project. And I'm gonna be making this in .NET 5 Although this can be created in any version of .NET Framework or .NET Standard. So we're going to click Create. And here we are with our basic Hello World. So to get started, I am going to import the Chase Labs configuration package into our project. Go over to the Solution Explorer, right click, and click Manage NuGet Packages. And then go to Browse and search for chaselabs.config, and there it is. And I will be using the version 0.0.5, .0 which as of recording is the latest version available. All right, now that it's been imported, we will uh, work on running the application. Okay, so I don't wanna run everything in the main method. So what I'll do is I'll just say new program. So we'd be calling the program. And here I will do a public or a I will call the constructor and inside of the constructor, I will create our config manager object. So I'll say config manager and I do not want this to auto fill. We'll say config manager manager equals new config manager. And now this will take two variables or two uh, uh, properties. But first, let's import the uh, namespace for config manager, which is just using chaselabs.cl configuration. And then the config manager is under lists. Now, as you can see, this takes two variables. One is optional, and I'll go over the second option later. The first option is path. This is where it will create the config file. So this has to include a directory and a file name. So to do this, I will just create a string above and we'll call it path. Uh, let's call it config path. So it's not to be confused with the system.io.path. And this obviously will not be a C-sharp tutorial. This will just be a tutorial on how to use the config manager. So I will create the config file inside of our build directory, inside of a folder called config, and then we'll call the file test.cfg. Now, 
The extension does not have to be CFG, and in fact, it does not actually have to be anything. You can just call it test, and it will work just fine. But for simplicity, I will say test.cfg or conf, but I'll do CFG. And then I will run our config path as the parameter of the config manager. Okay, and next, what I will do is I will add our default values to the manager. So we'll do manager.add. Now this can take either an object of a config or a string and a object value. Now this value can be an integer, a, a string array or a string or anything. What it will do is it will convert it in the end to a string. Um, it just makes it easier. So you can put like one, two, three, and you don't have to do one, two, three dot two string. So I will show you both ways, even though both ways are about the same. So first we'll do a new config and we will use it. And then inside of the config, it takes three parameters. The first object or the first parameter is the key. This is, uh, if you've ever used hash maps, this is the same thing. So the key is the distinguishing name of the config item. So we can say that the name is going to be website, for example, if we were to store a website here. And then the value we can make, uh, let's say google.com. And then the third parameter will be the config manager, which we can just pass manager there. And now we've created our first config item. Now let's say we are creating this config manager and this path already exists with a value of website. What it would do is it would ignore whatever this value is and instead use the value that is already inside of the config manager. So this, think of this as more of the default value. If no other value is found, it will use this. Now let's add a config item just using a string and an object. So we'll say manager dot add. And instead of using this, we'll go down. So we'll say the string, this will be, uh, let's say price. So in here, we can do the price and then we can, for example, do a string and say $150. And now price has been added as 150. And just to show you, you can use uh, different objects. We can say manager.add uh, boolean results. And then we can say false. We can do manager.add number result. And we can do 200. And there we go. So now what this will do is it will come in, create a config in the path that we've specified. And we should probably say, if the path does not exist, we should probably create it. Even though the config manager should create the path automatically, it's always good to do it anyway. So we'll say if the path does not exist, then we will create the directory. And this will ensure that the directory will be present. Again, this you can ignore for the most part. It's just 
boilerplate stuff on the application. Okay. So now the basic uh, setting and getting of the objects are complete or the setting of the default values. So what we can do now is we can open the location where this will inevitably build. And it will build into the debug, uh, the, the bin folder, and then debug, then net five. And then this is just a basic object that's in there. And now what we can do is we can control shift B to build the application. And as you can see, our application is in here. And now we can run. Ah, and as you can see, I've actually made a mistake when creating the config file because I have it creating the directory, including the test object here. So instead, what I will do is I will grab this and just remove this. Now the application will run and close immediately. And as you can see, our test.config file is now available. If we open this up, it will show our website, price, our Boolean result, which we wrote as a object here, and a number result. <clears throat> now, if we wanted to get these objects, we can. So below, I will have it uh, write out the value of these config items to the console. So I'll say manager dot list dot oops, and list is a function dot for each. And I'll grab the item and put it into a lambda function. Then I'll say right out to the console. And I will write the key of the item is going to be equal to item dot key. And then I'll say the value is going to be equal to item dot, you guessed it, value. And this will be super simple. It will just write out the key equals the key and the value equals the value. Now, because I do not want this to just close on its own, I will say console dot read. So that way when I press any key, it will end the application. And I'm not gonna bother running with debug. So I will do a control F5 to run without debug. And as you can see here, it's giving us the key and the value. But let's say I don't like this. I would like it to be something a little bit different. So I can go into here and I can change the value. So let's say the value is 355 the boolean result we can set to true and the number result we can set to 
800. The website, you know what, I don't like google.com. I'm gonna go with my website. DrewChaseProject.com. There we go. So now when we run the application, our new values should replace our old values. But this is a little bit clunky to have to write it inside of the config file every single time. So what we will do is in here, we will make it so we can change the config item in the actual uh, class. So we have actually a number of different ways of doing this. My favorite way is by creating a variable. That way it can be accessed easily from other classes. So I will create a public variable. This variable will be for our website. So it'll be of type string. And then inside of this, we will type in website and we'll set it equal to nothing by default. Now down here, I can get rid of our read statement and I can say website and that's equal to, well, hold on actually. Because I want our website variable, every time we get it, or every time we try to access what its variable is, I don't want it to be whatever the application has stored for it, meaning this value. Instead, I want it to be a definition, essentially. I want it to be so whenever I call this variable, it will go out and read that config file and come back with whatever that config file has returned to us. So what I can do is instead of doing an equal sign here, I can do an arrow operator. That means every time I call this object, it will come back and get the, the value fresh. So I can also say, instead, I can say get and set. And in here, if I were to make, if I were to bring all of this stuff out and put it into a function that we will call setup, and then in the start, we'll say we'll set up. And we will also make this manager a global variable. That way I can say when we get, we can return manager dot, and then we have a few options on how we can get a config item. We can get by the items index, if we know what that is. We can get by the items key, or we can get by the items value. Now you can ignore these two because they don't really matter. These are the main three. So let's say get by key. And what would we like to get? We would like to get the website. So I can grab the website and I can get it. Now this will return the config object. So what we'll need is the value. So we'll say dot value. So now every time we call the website, it will in turn grab whatever the value is, just like this is. And now we'll do the same thing for the set. So we'll say whenever you're setting this value, I wanna set the value of the config manager. So I will say, I'll just copy this, and I will say dot value equals value. And this is what, the, what we are setting it to. So for example, if now I were to say website, then this would equal 
something like freechaseproject.com if I can spell it, of course. And now our application will e or our website will equal truechaseproject.com. Let's make it a little bit more dynamic though, right? So I'll say website name. And then I'll do a console dot read line. And we'll set our website equal to it. Seems easy enough. And for simple organization, I'm going to remove all of this from here. And I will say void. There. And now right under setup, I can say init website. Now that's great and all for the website being able to, uh, you know, set it up and, and get the value and set the value. But how will we ever see it again? So I will grab this and say void print. And that way it will print the value. Okay, now let's set up the value for the other three objects we have here. Now, the reason I did the three objects like this is because they're all a little bit different. So, the price will obviously be the same as for the website. It was just in a different format. But the Boolean, so we'll say the B result, and then we'll copy the name of it. Now the boolean or the b result is going to be of a type bool. Now you'll immediately see that this is about to throw an error. So instead of value, what we'll put is parse boolean. And the value here does require a string. So we can just put either quotes or dot to string. Now that was easy enough. So let's do the same thing for the number result. And we can call this n result. And this will be of type integer. And as you can guess, it's gonna throw some errors. And I'm also just noticing this is set up as website here. So I'll copy this and replace it here. And then instead of parse boolean, we'll say parse integer. And now we can do the same here. We can say in it the uh, b result and in it the n result. And then we can say the B result is going to equal this. Now I'm not going to actually do any kind of logic here to decide if this is correct or not, just because it's a test. And I will do the same thing here. So I'll say in dot parse. And we'll put this into the end result. 
and we'll obviously change these from website to the boolean result and the integer result or actually it's the number result and there we go everything is almost set up We just need to call it. And we're never actually running this print, so we'll put that at the tail end. There we go, so let's run this. Okay, so it's asking for what we should set our website name to. Let's set the name to something now let's try and get this over here so we can read it. There we go. Let's set the website name to GitHub. Ah, and I see my error. This was actually never being used. Now it is. <laughs> there we go. And even though you couldn't really see it because at it minimized, it did in fact change it. The Boolean result, we can set that equal to false. And as you can see, it changes on the fly. And then the number result, we can set it something absurd like that and there we go it's updated them live and it's been able to fetch the information live and realistically that's the bulk of it now i did say we would go over the encryption part at the end so let's do that the encryption part is pretty basic all you have to do is type true and instead of being able to read this information, let's say it was information that needed to be kept private, like uh, user authentication, like your username and password, if that's something you needed to write out into a config. Um, realistically, anything you didn't want the user to be able to modify in a config, just set that to true, and it will prevent them from being able to uh, decrypt it or adjust it. So now if we run this again, and I just put this over on my other monitor, <clears throat> I can actually immediately see by toggle word wrapping that the, the text that was once here is now all gibberish and you can still see it change. So if I bring that over there and set the website name to YouTube, you can actually see it update right there. The Boolean result to true, again with the update, and the number result to five. And there's an update there as well. And as you can see, the information is still maintained but it's now encrypted, so you can't read it um, as the end user. So there we go. I'll change this to plain text. All right, so that is how to use the Chase Labs Configuration Manager. It's not as hard as it looks. Um, most of this stuff was to make it easier to display. So you can actually get rid of a great portion of this. And to show you how the configuration manager works in a real world application, let me open up one of my apps that I use it in. I use it in almost all of my apps, uh, but this is just a, a good test run. Let's open up this.
So if you see here, I'm actually getting the information from the config file. <clears throat> and I'm setting it as a public variable that can be accessed by the entire application. This means from anywhere in the application, I can read and write to the config with very little issue. And it also means that this value can technically be static and you won't have to worry about the, the value being erased because it's no longer in scope. All right. Other than that, I think we have covered the majority of what the Chase Labs Config Manager has to offer. It is a fairly basic uh, library, but I feel is a fairly powerful library, especially whereas you can read and write to the config file live. And you don't have to rely on databases to do the same. Now, for most of these, you could create a database and write the information to set database. Only problem with that is, if you only need to write a few items, it can be kind of a pain in the butt to get a database all up and running. Also, not all databases can be accessed cross-platform. The configuration manager can be. Because it is just a text file, it does not require any fancy uh, SQL database connection or anything of the sort to be able to be accessed properly. Other than that, my name is Drew and thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy this type of content, uh, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I do have a few other videos on the channel uh, relating to a few other libraries that I've created. One in C Sharp, which is my Chase Labs updater, which actually does utilize the configuration manager to write out the version file and maintain the version file. And I also have updated that to run in Node.js, which you can find that video also. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one.